So, I've been playing Tears of the Kingdom recently, as is everyone else, as it seems. I go on Twitter, and that is all I see. I go to work, and that's all we're talking about. I start a meeting, and it's 10 minutes until we actually talk about work. And yet, it's a single player game. I'm playing it alone, but I feel like I'm playing it with everyone. Like, take a look at this. Every time I boot my Switch up, without fail, every person online is playing Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, well, almost everyone. This is a game that invites you and you alone to go on an adventure, but somehow I feel more connected with the players around me in the real world than most multiplayer, or any game for that matter, can manage to accomplish. So, how is a single player game even accomplishing this. The whole thing has kind of had me thinking about the idea of connection, even kind of nostalgic for it, because back in the day, before the internet, uh, and if you wanted to like share something you found in a video game, you'd have to like go back to the schoolyard with your friends and like talk it over. Like in those days, it's almost like information was like fantastic, it was like this wanderlust thing that you'd like covet and share with someone else, like some sort of secret. And somehow, in a post-internet world, Tears of the Kingdom manages to capture that. These guys are sharing all sorts of secrets about video games they're playing, I bet. Yeah, I'm looking at you, pal. Now, the internet, and maybe this is like a cynical point of view, but I feel like it's sort of paved the way for the extinction of that sense of wonder when you're sharing information with a friend. And I guess maybe the adult equivalent to that playground sort of feeling is like the water cooler discussion. But even then, that's just a banter of opinions over whatever show you've been watching on Netflix. But Tears of the Kingdom rekindles that childlike sense of discovery and wanting to share it with other people. When I go online and I see the things people are sharing, the discoveries they're making, the inventions they're crafting, I don't see them as spoilers. I see someone's own approach. It's like a snapshot into their own adventure. And in that way, it's almost like the internet has amplified it more than softened it, because in most cases, I'm in just complete awe of what people are doing, and it just makes me all the more eager to immediately rush my game and try and do it for myself. And it's also just stupidly addicting. The moment players leave the Sky Island area, the way in which each of us choose to explore the rest of the world has felt so unique and completely different. I, for one, saw a big old hole in the ground and said, Fuck it, I'm jumping down that. Others went to find Hateno Village, some went to find the Tears, others hunted down shrines. It all feels distinct to the player. And that's really it. Tears of the Kingdom and the way in which players choose to explore its world, in a lot of ways, kind of feels like an expression of their creativity, even maybe their personalities. Like I, for one, have spent 50 hours in that game since it's launched, and I have not done a single temple. Sorry, Zelda. You're gonna have to wait a little longer until I find you. But that's what makes no one's experience the same, but still inspiring to listen to. Seeing someone share something online that's just absolutely mind boggling, something you would have never been able to figure out or put together on your own, feels like that schoolyard wonder in that it just makes me want to rush back to the game and try it for myself. And the abilities the game gives you to solve problems to explore are, in so many ways, these tools of creation. Hear me out. It's sort of like mimicking someone else's art. You can attempt someone else's style, but it's still going to be an interpretation that is your own. So in trying to do something that someone else did, you're actually kind of recreating the experience through your own lens, which makes it distinct to you. And even just like saying that, uh, in this context of a game, I don't remember the last time I've ever spoken about a single player game like this, if ever. In fact, let's actually talk about single player games for a sec, because there's been an interesting trend this year that I kind of want to diverge into. The most successful games of this year are actually, in fact, single player games. Jedi Survivor was the top selling game of April. Hogwarts Legacy has made a billion dollars. 
Tears of the Kingdom sold 10 million in just three days. And Resident Evil 4 Remake is the second fastest selling game in the entire Resident Evil franchise. They're all single player games and they are just dominating the charts. Now, yes, of course, those are all gargantuan IPs that are basically just made to print money. I know that. But if you were to compare that with multiplayer games that are also banking on big IPs, the track record for those are far more dire. Marvel's Avengers is shutting down this year. Gotham Knights reception was, well, really rough. There also seems to be a lot of skepticism and criticism around Suicide Squad, which is walking in similar footsteps to Gotham Knights. And it doesn't help that it's also a looter shooter. And speaking of looter shooters, this isn't a gargantuan IP, but let's talk about Redfall. This was Studio Arcane's first big multiplayer game under the Xbox umbrella and was supposed to be a big old hoot as a day one Game Pass game, but its launch has been disastrous. Which, in of itself, is an interesting case study. Arcane is a studio known for its single player games, but has now been positioned to make a multiplayer experience, and in doing so, completely misses the mark on what made them an identifiable studio in the first place. It's just an observation, and I'm really not entirely making a point. It's just enough to have made me think about Tears of the Kingdom's success and the success of many other single player games this year. And just kind of, you know, think about this pivot that studios have had back and forth between multiplayer games and single player games. Thinking about games like Tears of the Kingdom, even the feeling of online communities that have formed around from software games, albeit that they still have multiplayer elements to them. It's interesting to see how connections can still form even thrive from a solo experience, let alone one that transcends the idea of being just a game and more about the personal stories and adventures we create for ourselves in things like Tears of the Kingdom, and then get to share those stories among friends. Now, not every developer can be Nintendo or From Software, just like how every game can't bank on enormous IPs like Zelda, Star Wars, Harry Potter, or Marvel's Avengers. It's just kind of been an incredible reminder about the connectedness a game can have with people, sometimes more than any other medium, like the ability to just want to share something you're doing with someone else, just like me sitting here talking to you about Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, that's it for this week's episode of The Current Locker. Thanks for coming by. Do you have your Switch? No. <laughs> Why not? Because I'm a dumbass. Because you don't care about Korra? No, I do. F those. They're so cute.